Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing dinosaurs. Okay, not really dinosaurs, as much as their demise. We're going to discuss that event that approximately 65 million years ago resulted in the extinction of dinosaurs, and of course the event that led to mammals becoming the predominant species on the planet. But more specifically, we're going to be discussing this relatively recent study that actually discovered something that nobody expected. It looks like this event that was very likely caused by a really large asteroid, did not result in what we would refer to as a nuclear winter. A sudden cooling of the planet that might have lasted for thousands of years, dramatically changing the climate and thus leading to the extinction event, which was also previously used to explain how certain species, such as smaller mammals, were able to survive. In this case, it might have not actually happened that way. And so even though nobody debates the existence of the crater, or of course a super large collision resulting in a tremendous explosion, tsunami, various earthquakes, and potentially global wildfires across the entire planet, what actually is being debated are the months or years afterwards. What exactly happened, or I guess more importantly, what led to the extinction event that followed? Because that particular part definitely happened. It's just now not entirely clear why. And so in this video, let's discuss some of these new discoveries and of course this relatively recent paper, but also because I'm actually planning to do a few of these videos on what we've discovered about dinosaurs and their extinction in the last few months. If you'd like to learn more, make sure to subscribe because there are going to be more videos coming really soon. So here's the paper. A recent publication with the title Steady Decline in Mean Annual Air Temperatures in the First 30,000 Years After the Cretaceous Paleogene Boundary. And essentially what this particular study does is examine how the temperatures changed in approximately 4,000 years before the collision and 30,000 years after it. Specifically focusing on mean annual air temperature, also known as MAT, before and after the collision. But I guess the question in this case is, how are they doing this? Since the dinosaurs were not really keeping track of their temperatures, how can the scientists possibly know what the temperature was? And for this study, what the scientists did is analyze various bacterial fossils deposited in various samples of coal, with all of these coal samples coming from various deposits located in Canada. And here the scientists can actually see what sort of things these ancient bacteria were depositing inside their cells during those particular periods. Specifically, they can actually see if these bacteria were somehow changing the internal composition due to the changes in temperature. For example, certain bacteria located in certain climates will often thicken their cell wall during much colder periods, sort of like creating a thick blanket around themselves. Normally, these structures, even though they're really small, are detectable in various samples. And in this case, it's also important to realize that unlike dinosaurs or other complex animals, this particular event, despite being very destructive to larger animals, would have a very limited effect on most of the bacterial life. But the climate change, if it did happen, would very likely impact bacteria as well and most likely would be very visible in various deposits. And previous studies have actually suggested that some of this was visible in various types of marine deposits and marine life. But it did not seem to affect these bacteria. The samples examined in this study did not show any signs that they were preparing for any kind of winter, with some of them even showing signs that they were actually preparing for some kind of a warming trend that lasted about 5,000 years, but that also stabilized pretty quickly. Although here, the warming event is not actually believed to be the result of the explosion or even the emissions coming from this particular explosion afterwards. It's believed to be related to something slightly different. Around the same time, within approximately a few thousand years, there was another major emission coming from the location known as the Deccan Traps. In that sense, this was a really, really large volcano. A volcano located in India. And the emissions from this volcano are believed to have changed the climate and the temperature just enough to be visible in these bacterial samples. But when it comes to the collision resulting from this asteroid, the actual effects do not seem to be as profound or as visible compared to any samples investigated in this particular study. And that of course suggests something really major. It implies that this collision most likely did not change the climate that much. As a matter of fact, the climatic conditions might not have been the main reason why the dinosaurs perished. Now, obviously, the dinosaurs pretty close to the collision would be gone pretty much right away, but not all dinosaurs lived in the same location. So what happened to the rest of the planet? Why exactly did dinosaurs disappear everywhere else? Well, in this case, the scientists can only speculate for now, but they did come up with some explanations. Although here, it's also important to know exactly what they discovered. 
So first of all, based on everything we know so far, it's currently believed that this must have happened approximately 65 million years ago, and very likely during springtime. And the reason the scientists believe this was springtime is because of the following tsunami. In the last few years, the scientists have also discovered various deposits in certain parts of North America that even showed us fossils of various fish, ancient fish, that were very likely getting ready for some kind of a spawning season, which for all of these fish happens in the spring. This so-called the day when the dinosaurs died is also described a little bit better in the video in the description. We don't actually know what exact year this was, but it was about 66 million years ago. And when looking at the average temperature throughout the year, 4,000 years before and 30,000 years after it, the temperatures were generally between 16 and 29 degrees Celsius. So maybe a little bit hotter than today, but something that represented a general average during this period of time. During some of the warmer periods, the temperature was about 25 degrees Celsius on average. But none of these samples reveal any kind of unusual impact winter that was always predicted to be the result of this collision. Which basically suggests that if there was any kind of cooling effect or any kind of winter, it might have been extremely short, it might have actually only lasted for maybe a few months, possibly a few years maximum. The impact winter, or I guess the nuclear winter, seems to have never happened. And to some extent there does seem to be the opposite evidence, that there might have been a warming effect that lasted for at least some time. Or exactly what caused it is still unclear, it could have been the volcanoes. But then what exactly happened? Well, there's really no clear evidence for anything yet, but one explanation is maybe all of this resulted in some kind of a really large dust cloud that very likely circulated around the planet for at least a year. I guess somewhat similar to these really large storms we sometimes observe on Mars. And so this dust cloud might have resulted in just overall darkening of the planet, which would kill off most of the larger plants, which would then lead to general starvation, because a lot of the larger herbivores would not have anything to eat, perishing within just a few months, which would then collapse the food chain, resulting in a relatively fast demise of all of the larger dinosaurs. But obviously leaving one cousin of the dinosaurs, birds, alive. And there's a really intriguing study that I'm going to be discussing in the next video that essentially made a really, really brilliant discovery relatively recently. A discovery that beaked birds existed right before the extinction event, but they weren't really that common and were not really widespread. As a matter of fact, they coexisted with so-called tooth birds, or basically birds that had teeth, but also obviously birds that were actually eating different types of food. And so these relatively recent discoveries coming from China identified several major fossils of essentially ancient birds that already contained all of the bird features, including beaks, that definitely existed for millions of years before the dinosaurs perished, with at least one sample discovered not so long ago that was actually extremely similar to modern birds existing right before this happened to the planet. And in this case, it implies that certain species, such as of course beaked birds, suddenly found themselves in a huge advantage compared to a lot of other animals. They were able to, for example, eat seeds, or potentially use their beaks to open other things that were inaccessible to other species, and thus survive these really tough times. And so even though the vegetation itself might have perished, and the conditions became relatively inhospitable, there would still be quite a lot of seeds around, and potentially a lot of other food that would be kind of hard to reach without a beak, that suddenly made birds and small mammals the new kings of the planet. Their food source never disappeared, and their predators suddenly became extinct. But it would really take only a few months in dark conditions to basically kill off most of the other plants and more complex life without the need for cooler temperatures. And so if the findings behind the study are somewhat correct, it actually has a major implication for how fast Earth can recover from various extremely, extremely catastrophic conditions. It basically suggests that despite major climate changes, planet Earth might have an ability to return back to the original state within just a few years, or I guess a few thousand years. Even if the event itself is one of the most explosive events to have ever occurred in the history of the planet. And that's of course a pretty big discovery, but also a discovery that needs to be analyzed even more, because it would completely change our perspective on what exactly happened to dinosaurs, and also what might have happened previously in other extinction events as well. And to do this, the scientists behind this paper are planning to look at more coal from other sites, including the sites in the US, in order to create a much more accurate temperature record right before and right after this event. But overall, what all of this kind of suggests is, of course, that we still don't really know exactly what happens when various large rocks, large asteroids, strike our planet. Some studies suggested cooling effect, some studies suggested the opposite, but I guess what none of the studies argue is that, for some reason, all of this results 
in some kind of an extinction event. We just don't exactly know why. But at the same time, there's always some kind of a survivor, and usually completely by accident. Like I mentioned before, birds that had a beak and also relatively small mammals were not particularly that successful at first. But once the dinosaurs were out of the picture, suddenly these beaked survivors found themselves with a lot of different resources to explore, leading to an explosive evolution of the species, resulting in things like penguins, but also things like hummingbirds. These guys, though, did not get very lucky. At least that's the explanation for now. We're probably not going to know exactly what happened here until further studies analyzing various sedimental deposits from around the world, and even then, the actual conclusion might not be reached for many, many years. With the main conclusion in this case being that we still don't really know exactly what happens to the planet when asteroids collide, with the climatic changes still being very unpredictable and not really well understood. But the good news is that our planet seems to be able to recover from pretty much anything within just a few thousand years. And as long as the species has the right adaptation, it can survive as well. And so that's pretty much the conclusion from this paper as well. But we're going to discuss more of these discoveries from the last few months in some of the future videos on dinosaurs. Check out previous videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful personal t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.